my prayer and desire for this morning's devotional is that we will really resolve today to let God search our hearts and know our thoughts. This psalm, Psalm 139, which we are about to read and learn together, is about how God knows everything in us. God is all-knowing and God is present. Nothing is hidden before him. But it's one thing to know and to recognize that God knows everything. And it's another thing to honestly say, search my heart, O God, and know my heart. We read in verse 1 that that's his prayer, or that's his statement, O Lord, you have searched me and known me. But in verse 23, the second to the last verse, he prayed, search me, O God, and know my heart. God is all-knowing, and he knows all about the writer's life, what he does, what he thinks, where he goes, and what he says. Look at verse 1 to 4. You know, when he, I sit down, when I rise up, you discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down, and are acquainted with all my ways, even before a word is on my tongue. Behold, O Lord, you know it all together. In other words, there's nothing in you and in me that he does not know. God knows more, much more than we know ourselves. And it's because he is God, he's sovereign. And because of that realization that God is all, our, all around him, the psalmist sometimes feels helpless in verse 5 to 6. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain it. Thus, a writer like this writer here in Psalm 139 may be tempted to run away from such an overpowering presence of God, but there is no escape. Who can escape before God? Is it possible? Surely this may bring fear to the sinners and to the rebels, but it brings comfort to us, his own children, his believers. Verse 7 to 8 says, Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. Just like what the writer of Hebrews says, that he will never leave us nor forsake us. That where, where we are, what situation we are in, God is always with us. Isaiah 41.10, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will uphold you with the victorious right hand of my righteousness. So wherever he goes, God is present with him. Wherever we, do, we, we go, God is present with us. Verse 9 and 10 says, If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. Whether in darkness or in light, God sees him constantly. God is always there at whatever situation, day or night, darkness or in a broad daylight. The, the psalmist said in verse 11 to 12, If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light about me be night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as the day, for darkness is as light with you. So this first section in this psalm, Psalm 139 verses 1 to 12. It talks about who God is, how he is expressed by the psalmist here, that he is the all-knowing, all-present God. Wherever we go, whatever we do, whatever we think, whatever we speak, he knows. And whatever situation we are in, day or night, darkness or daytime, you are in problem or not, God is there. It talks about the dealings of God in our daily walk of life. Day in and day out, 24-7. There is not a second, a moment in our lives where God does not know, know and God is not aware of the condition of your life. This should encourage you and this should encourage each one of us that God takes care for us, that he knows everything we need, not to condemn us, but to take care for us as his children. Of course, to those who continue to do wickedness, this should be a source of fear. And in the next section, we learn about how God has formed us. Being the creator, God has perfect knowledge of those we created. He knows the innermost thoughts as well as the physical characteristics or 
composition of everyone and has a detailed knowledge of the lives that are yet to be. Verse 13 to 16, this wonderful chunk of these verses just describe of how amazingly God has created us uniquely. For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance in your book were written, every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. So in everyday affairs, God knows what he's doing. And before we even were formed to be who we are right now, even when we were conceived, God knows already what kind of person we will be, everything in us, what will be our DNA. As the psalmist contemplates about these wonderful works of God, he finds out that they are, they are too vast to understand and too numerous to count. But when he awakes after his meditation, he knows that God is still with him. Look at verse 17 and 18. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. If I would count them, they are more than the sand. I, I awake and am still with you. There is no use to fathom the wisdom of God, why he created you and me. There is there's no exhaustion of discovering the many wonderful works of God's creation. And even our lives, even our body will, will, will continue to amaze us. How intricate, how wonderful and perfectly we are made. Through his meditation, the psalmist has grown so close to God. You are not a product of an afterthought. You are designed, I am designed, and with, with purpose and intention, intentionality. As a result, he sees the wicked as God sees them and hates evil as God hates it. In other words, his heartbeat is as the heartbeat of God. He therefore prays that God will act in righteous judgment to those who are wicked. In verse 19 to 22, Oh, that you would slay the wicked, O God. O men of blood, depart from me. They speak against you with malicious intent. Your enemies take your name in vain. Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord? And do I not love those who rise up against you? I hate them with complete hatred. I count them my enemies. That was his resolve when he knew of how God has created him wonderfully and, and uniquely and how God has cared for him by being there or in all times, whatever he's doing and wherever he is. And there is no reason also to be proud when this is this is the case. He also looks at her heart, at his heart, and he also is aware that he himself is not perfect. He honestly prays that God will show him his sin cleanse him and lead him into a life of holiness. Yes, when God knows everything in us, we cannot be pretend, we cannot presume, and we cannot be hypocrite. God knows our heart. So he prayed as a conclusion, search me, O God, and know my heart, try me and know my thoughts, and see, see if there be any rebels way in me or wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Now as we look, we look at our hearts this morning, reflecting on the word of God, God sees our heart in and true, nothing is hidden. How can we pretend before our God? How can we look into the mirror and pretend that we didn't see anything? If there is something we need to confess and repent, we have to, because God is a gracious God. He is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. Meet me that in this devotional this morning. We allow God through the, His Holy Spirit to search our heart, to say this prayer with him, with the psalmist. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. What are our motives? What are we thinking? See if there be any grie grievous way or wicked ways in us. Lead me in the way of everlasting. Our hearts are deceitful above all things and is pretty wicked. It's only God who, could, who knows what's the status of our hearts. Let's not be deceived. Let's allow the Holy Spirit to, to 
minister to us this up this morning by searching our hearts and aligning our hearts unto the heartbeat of God. May it be that just as Paul encourages us in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, to present our bodies, our lives as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is our spiritual worship. Shall we not? Let us pray. Father, thank you for your word this morning. Search our hearts, O Lord, and know our hearts. And try our hearts, Lord. Try our, our, our see if there'll be any, any wicked thoughts and grievous ways or wicked, wicked ways, Lord, and lead us into the way everlasting. Lord, forgive us for the many sins we have committed. You know what, what what are the sins we have, Lord? We confess each one of them. Forgive us and cleanse us thoroughly. Thank you that you can forgive us and cleanse us. Thank you for the blood of Christ that cleanses us from all sin. Thank you for this wonderful truth that you are with us. Wherever we go, whatever we do, you are our God who is ever-present, Lord. Whether we are having some challenges of life, every, everything around us is dark and gloomy, it doesn't matter. You are always with us. Thank you for this truth, Lord. It's comforting to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.